up in Hoffman. I'm a public artist here in, well, I'm actually in Sydney, Australia right now. And it's just beautiful here. I mean, I've never seen such a topography before. I don't, um, I've never, I've been to the Middle East, I've been to Europe, I've been to Canada, I've been, but this is, I haven't been to China, but also this formation, the, these uh, um, different uh, structures in nature that I've never seen. The botanicals in here are just amazing. And I want to say that um, an artist sometimes they have to um, get out of their box to be able to be creative and, and develop new ideas and really uh, find some compassion for nature and things in their lives so that they can do um, what images that make them excited and things like that. And so one of the exercises of um, an artist uh, who's formally trained, um, they'll, they'll, uh, the teachers will, and I've had some famous painters as my teachers because I went through free school in Brooklyn College and all the uh, New York artists were there teaching because they were getting a lot of money to, to come in for two days a week. And so I had the benefit of having like fabulous uh, people to give me all of their training. And the, it was, they're very professional. The, this is not just, um, well, it can be just painting one thing and then just concentrating your whole life on that. I had one of my teachers was a ceramic teacher um, and he made a cup and saucer all his life. It was made out of porcelain and it had different um, cracks in it. And that's what he was interested in. But what he finally, in 35 years, uh, when he would be showing in museums and, and the story behind the porcelain was the essential focus for why he did what he did. And here also, uh, as a painter, um, you know, going through life and being able to see different images um, and controlling myself in terms of how much paint I use and things like that. Um, one of the exercises that these uh, people who are training uh, people to look further than they would normally or look differently. One of the um, exercises is to, when you see something in colors, that you don't get carried away, but also that you can concentrate on what the subject matter is, is to make something in black and white. So this was normally a, a sneaker. Uh, that had a lot of color to it. And um, I had to concentrate on the form. So I d it took a long time to study it. And this is, for instance, um, a tree. And if you look really closely at all the different, uh, I guess, how do you say, um, strokes of the pencil, I sat there and looked at that tree until I fell in love. I mean, you know, the appreciation for nature, the appreciation for all the nuances that one tree can have is, I think, unless you really study it. But you don't really study something until you really look hard at it and you actually concentrate on, um, I guess, the form, how the things are put together, and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, so that's something very detailed, but then you can do something very quick, too. You know, you can make a drawing where you just appreciate the pencil. And so you use different types of pencils. You'll use a number four pencil, which will be a little thicker than a number two pencil. And then you use different graphite and things like that. And that's how an artist gets their ideas, is by experimenting with different things. But you can just do still lifes. I'm not just, but you can do still lifes all your life and you can really enjoy just the painting of itself and that's fine too.
But here today, I'm more concerned about our environment. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to um, paint uh, this <laughs> this fantastic scenery, but I'm going to control myself today. I am going to just do the scenery in black and white. It's going to be very hard, but I'm going to do it. And so oh, I'm going to take out my pen. Oh, my Hi, goodness. Robin. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you all the way. We're here. What a surprise. <laughs> what? How does this happen? I can't believe it. You know, um, you are so nice. And have a seat. And you know what? This is, you know, I can't believe this. This is, like, perfect. So I have this project to do, and I have to do this painting at the same time. And um, maybe you can help me. Maybe. I mean, I'm thinking Maybe. you could because you're an amazing person here in this community, but in general. And uh, so what I want to do here, and so can we talk a little bit? Yeah, about <laughs> logistics? Sure. <laughs> okay, so what happens is um, I know you're a part of a committee. Uh, um, uh, I mean, you're the chair. Can you talk about your committee? Your, yeah, what you're sure, doing sure. Here in Charlottesville? And just tell me a little bit, first of all, about yourself. Mm. I mean, like, why are you doing that sort of thing and that sort of thing? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm Emily. <laughs> you know that part. And uh, I'm a mom of three little kids. So that's what I do a lot in my free time is hang out with children. We do with some art, too. We do some painting and stuff. But um, it's, a little, it's messy, I would say. Maybe it's messier than what you do. Maybe it's not. Maybe we're actually, you're, maybe you're just as messy in your art as we are with the kiddos. Um, but when I'm not hanging out with my three kids, or sometimes they come with me, I am. Is it okay if I paint while you talk? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, I am the chair of a group called Seville 100, which started a little over two years ago, basically with the intention of getting people out of their silos in the environmental community. So he, we had all these amazing groups in Charlottesville doing climate work, climate change work, climate action, but no one was really talking to each other. And so people were duplicating work. People didn't know it was already being done. And so we got together to sort of say, OK, let's get everybody out of their silos so that we can amplify each other's voices. Can I ask you, yeah. what is the timeline of all of this? You mean like, so we started a little over two years ago, and uh, so what What year is that? Oh gosh, you're going to ask, well, you know what, it's, it was around the time that I had my third child. 16, so 2017 17. was really when things got ignited with SIVA 100. Obviously, lots of groups like the Sierra Club have been doing work for a long time, but SIVA 100 what was created. What is the Sierra Club? Sierra Club is an environmental organization that's a national organization, um, but also has a local chapter and a state chapter here in Virginia. So they uh, do lots of different projects. They've worked against the pipelines in Virginia. They've done a lot on clean water and clean air uh, nationally. Um, and yeah. And so, so, all right. So what do you think was the impetus for Actually, everybody's starting to get organized, uh, like in the in a local sense, as opposed to like Sierra Club, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Nature Conservancy, Servancy, yeah, yeah, which are all amazing organizations. Yes, I think it just felt like, you know, there's there's sort of what's happening on the national level, there's what's happening on the state level, which are, is important, but what's happening in your own homes, in your own communities, in your own backyard where you actually see what's happening day to day and you know that better and it's easier to sort of think on that level and do stuff on that level and see the, the change that you want to see. Um, you know, the, the people always say that act local, think global, act local. So I think SIVA 100 was formed as a way of like, okay, we see what's happening globally. We want to make an impact. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta really work on our local system first. So, okay, I want to preface that too by saying how I met you a little bit. Oh yeah. So, um, I want to say I've always been um, looking forward 
all my years since I marched actually with Gloria Steinem for feminist power. <laughs> and when I was 17, <laughs> that's all then. But anyway, um, and in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue. Um, I've always looked forward to all my life to uh, start, for instance, a Brooklyn organic co-op was one of the first, and it's really big now. Um, I've just always looked forward to doing something where it made positive community outlooks and changes. And uh, anyway, so when I came to Charlottesville, I started raising money doing art. And uh, which I always do too, like caricatures and that sort of thing. And um, I have to say, after 45, it just became uh, when when they were talking about uh, eliminating uh, the Paris Accord and not electing for it, it just made me nuts. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. was looking everywhere. I wanted to do everything I could to dispel the idea that. Um, and this is happening in a lot of countries, not just us. It's happening in Portugal, we're taking down the Amazon. It says that people are denying that we need the elements of life, which is nature, to live. Mm -hmm. It's just denying it. And so um, what I want to say is I found, I don't even know how, Generation 180. Yeah, well, me too. That was, that, I have no idea. No, rec what no happened? idea. I, it's, it makes me a little nervous that like, like the internet knows me so well that they like somehow planted the Generation 180 because I was like interested in that stuff. But I'm the same way. I have no idea how I initially heard of it. Oh my goodness. All right, so They're but, listening. so but, and because of that, um, so we would go to these meetings. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking how when we came to the meetings and they were held like in different places at the time. Yeah. So anyway, I want to talk about this for a bit, a minute. So this is recycled. Nice. <laughs> Dumpster dived. And this is like the lining of cabinets and stuff. Oh, that, yeah, so yeah. what happens with the carpenters when they do these fast builds um, is that they throw the materials right after they cut them because they're not the right size or there's, there's not, they, you know, the materials are just there and they're squared and they're, you know, so it's ready for me to use. But when I was in New York, and going to schools and uh, you know being affiliated with the artists there, that's what you did. You know, you used materials that were available and free. Yeah. But also, uh, if you're always painting, you're always observing your immediate area, and you're always figuring out like, you know, uh, this is this is not here anymore. Especially if, like me, I was a landscape painter all my life. But anyway, so what I want to say is, so Generation 180. Connected okay. us. Yes. Initially. I'm going to start painting. But what I'm going to okay. do uh, today is I'm going to mess with my head. And even though this is a beautiful landscape, as you can see, mm. um, I'm going to make it two, three tones. Three tones. Three tones. I'm going to stick to it. So I'm going to... It's kind of like you're, um, you're holding yourself back from doing what you normally would do. Yep. And in that respect, I believe that's what organizations are. Mm. It's that, like, you go through your normal, you go through, sorry, you go through your normal <laughs> life. <laughs> And then you kind of have your routine. You have your children, you get up in the morning, you have your cereal, blah, blah, blah. But then if you elect to, you can do something out of your box that somebody else is already doing, mm -hmm. organized it for you and that sort of thing. But in this instance, you are the chairperson, right? Mm, yeah. All right, so what I want you to do uh -oh. for yeah. me, <laughs> so you get your crayons out and all that stuff while I'm painting and we're talking and all that. Those are cards. Oh, okay. And so, and I Are always- Are you getting me to do your holiday cards? <laughs> <laughs> well, not exactly, but sort of. Sort like of. this, okay. this kind of holiday, and while I talk, I'm gonna put my paints out because I'm gonna have to paint too. So, oh, so what happens is, um, we, you know, you have your primary colors, which I'm not gonna need all of them. 
I'm actually going to, well, I do need my primary colors, even though it's going to be three, two, I do need my primary color. Okay, but I'm going to use red, put a whole bunch of that stuff, because um, it mixes really well with um, ultramarine um, blue to make, uh, if that's not really a red red, I should use a better red, but anyway, uh, it makes a very good, you can make brown with a little bit of yellow, but it can also make a nice gray. Oh, nice. Yeah, so. My uh, two and a half year old, they're blown and gray. He switches the R's and the L's, so. Using the blown and the gray. <laughs> it's so cute. It's like, okay, now we're all saying it. Uh oh. Yes, I think I'm going to do that next time I, do, yeah, I talk about just, painting. Definitely. And Lowey. That no, was actually, our favorite. He should be on the sh your show or my show. Yeah, and, yeah and get yes. little young James on. He's very informed. He's very informed. You take he him knows everywhere. All, he knows all the songs. All right, so, but here. Okay, what am I doing now? Yes, while we're talking, you're just kind of, um, you're going to open one of those cards. Okay. And then you're going to decide who they should go to. In my idea, every year, like these holidays are really about caring for somebody else, whether it be Thanksgiving, you know, Martin Luther King Day, or, you know, um, I love... Uh, multicultural, you know, holidays, and and it's all about looking at somebody beside yourself. Yeah. And then what is it that you can give them to thank them for being who they are, right? Yeah. So you have those. Well, I have to decide. Yeah. Whoa. But you have all those organizations. So when you take out a card, can you tell me who you're going to do it to? Ooh, which who I'm thanking. And the, yes. And I what like they that. do. Yeah. Do you I like that? that. Yeah, Isn't I love that a that. great idea for a holiday thing? Yeah, totally. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like. I love this. The thinking of it is thank you. Uh, we just started Advent in our house. We do like a little Advent for the month of December. And uh, one of the pieces of Advent that we do is the kids think of something that they're grateful for. So that our focus at Christmas is not, and the holidays is not just like, what am I getting? What am I getting? But also like l all the things that we already have. And you can tell that the kids have been listening to what mom is talking about because last night they did their, or the other day, they did their first one and they were like, we're grateful for the water. We're grateful oh. for the earth. And I was like, oh gosh. Oh, Emily, that's so, <laughs> I know, oh I was like so, oh. I was so excited. Oh, that's, um, oh, that's awesome. That they get it. But so how important it is for you to be involved, right? Yeah. At this point of their lives. I think it's the same with me. Why I got involved with things was because of my mentors were people who were very interested in the community at large. Okay, so who are you doing that to? I'm going to start on that note with the youth climate strike. Um, and it's uh, Gudrun is its leader. Uh, and they are a group that, uh, well, the youth climate strike is an international movement, but we have an amazing local group of kids and teenagers in uh, Charlottesville who have started striking for climate, uh, led by Gudrun Campbell, um, who's a, only a seventh grader at Buford Middle School and um, they are striking to bring attention to the fact that children are going to school to prepare for their future but the grown-ups in this community and in this world are not protecting the, their future and not doing enough to stop the degradation of our so environment. So tell me on that card then, give her a task or something like that that you believe, which she, she's probably already doing, but yeah. can you say like thank you for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think what I'm going to say is I'm so grateful for what she's doing, but I'm also going to add that I want to hear her voice and the voice of youth at every single meeting in this state of Virginia. There should be somebody speaking for the children who are going to experience the side effects of climate change mm. for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was really struck when I dropped my kindergarten off for her first day of kindergarten. They had a thing, it was like class of 2032. And I just was like, oh my God, I've been thinking so much about 2030 and 2050 and like here she'll be graduating and her future will already be determined by what policy we're making today. Now. Thank goodness she has your, you as her mother. Now, <laughs> wait a minute. Dream. So now let's talk about you again a uh, little bit while you're doing that. Because you have... You writing and thinking? Yes. Oh. Oh, <laughs> maybe it's because you're... No, it's on, this one, right? I can maybe, do Maybe. How is it that you, I think you, you can do that? Uh-oh. Because really what is your profession? Emergency room nurse. <laughs> and what do we... And what do... New, do? Yes. Get interrupted. <laughs> but also, they have to be, what, prioritizing? Yeah, and thinking about what has to happen first and doing two things at once. You got to be purposeful... Yeah. You can't be like willy nilly because it's an emergency, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, do you think this climate thing is an emergency? Yes, I definitely think it's an emergency. I think it's an emergency, and we're treating it like it's not an emer emergency. And it, it's like it's like preventative health care, right? Nobody likes to talk about preventative health care. Nobody likes to do it because there's no like. You know, it's hard to wait, see. Wait, wait, wait. What I mean is, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, again, going back to the point where we both don't know why we volunteer so much or whatever we yeah. do. It's that, uh, first of all, I feel like you know as well as I do, and I'm also a registered nurse for 40 years. I've worked uh, simultaneously as an art therapist, nurse, you name it, but I've been doing it. So anyway, but what I'm saying is while I was a nurse in an institution as hospitals, which I think was maybe 25 years of my career, I basically worked within the community because I had to know the community. That's right, what I'm right, saying. right. You had to. And then I had to hear what the problems were and then deliver a solution like in nanoseconds. And I knew it was possible. That's what I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like um, a lot of people depend on you because you have that ability, that insight sort of thing where you understand that it, this is this is an emergency. So how do we you know, how do we no longer think about ourselves, right? And what can I do to uh, help my family at the same time help my community help my family? Yeah. And so you have to do more cards. I have to do more cards. Okay, yes. okay, I know, I know. I'm just listening <laughs> we, to what you're saying. Um, it's so this good, is exactly Robin. why Jeez. it's so great that you're here because <laughs> I would never get this done. Oh, I have to do a painting. I mean, I have to do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's what you're good at, why you're the chairperson of C100, right? That's how that happened? Yeah, I guess that's how that happened. Um, yeah, I think it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, yeah. I got, I think as a, the reason I started doing more environmental work and more climate action work was because of my children. So for me, it is very, it's very personal. It's very much what I feel like is my duty as a parent, as a mother, as a nurse. Um, like those are my other hats that I wear and the environment, the being more involved in climate action, I feel like is actually fulfilling my role as mother and nurse. You know, that you are the, that. Yeah, but why did, why does, all right, first of all, you're talking about who else is in C100? C100. Well, I was just going to write another note, another thank you note to Charlottesville Climate Collaborative, also known as C3, which is a local Charlottesville group um, that's doing amazing work on what you can do personally to affect... Can you write that? Amazing. Climate. Thank you for doing amazing oh, yeah, work. yeah, I should be writing as I yes. say it out loud. Thank you for doing... You want me to say it out loud? <laughs> yes. What do they do? Well, so they empower people to make the changes. So thank you for empowering people to make the changes in their house or in their business, right? Yes. They, so they help households, personal uh, 
people to do personal work and you've got like work. ten cards. I'm, so you oh, better gosh. just get gosh, it in Thank the you for doing amazing work and empowering us to <laughs> do more as a community to locally Shit. combat wait, wait, one one minute. Okay. Climate change. Okay, so let me let me just preface this. Who else is in the C100 real quick? Okay, let's see if I can get them all in. So we've got Youth Climate Strike. We've got Extinction Rebellion. What do they do? Quickly. They do uh, nonviolent direct action, bringing awareness and expecting our government to do more on climate change. Uh, Charlottesville Climate Collaborative, I mentioned. Um, the Green Grannies, which are a singing group of uh, grannies or granny-aged individuals who uh, bring attention through song to the issues. Uh, the Eco Village, uh, which is an intentional community that's starting off Rio Row, that's amazing, uh, that will provide a real, like, holistic way of living uh, with the environment. Um, Leap, uh, which is uh, does helps people retrofit their homes, look at their homes to make them more weather uh, weather efficient, more um, efficient, basically, and they're amazing and doing really cool work. Uh, and uh, okay, we also have I'm like going around. I guess my, it's the, the well, There's no, this so, is good. Sierra because, Club. Because what you're doing for 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 uh, me, for instance, I've been volunteering for them. What my forte is, I guess, is like to get people out and about and join these things. Like I go and get names for petitions. Yes, totally. And that's just because of my background. Okay, so. I have to say, this has been really good to um, be with you. And also, I want to say that all the initiatives that they're doing is not only is medical as well. And the fact that like people actually do um, volunteer for a uh, free clinic and all that. But what I want to say is thank you so much, Emily. Thank you, Robin. For doing yeah, everything. you know I could talk about this forever. Yes. So. And uh, I just want to give you another hug. And, yeah. And thank you for being you. And I don't know what we would do without you. And um, so the idea for us to be together and for me to do this painting has to do with the idea of the Aboriginal uh, community um, who, for 40,000 years, um, basically uh, preserved their land. And then people just came and they just what they're doing now is they're just ignoring the actual nature, natural um, abilities of the earth. They're just ignoring it. And so the Aboriginal people did it for so many years and I just want, if you want to do a, you want to do a chant? Yeah, you ready? Yes. What do we want? Uh, Climate justice. Yes. When do we want it? Now. Now. And if we don't get it, shut it down. Okay, ready? Yes. What do we want? Climate justice. When do we want it? Now. And if we don't get it? We just gotta shut it down. Shut it down.